I'm using a light because it's currently too dark in my room for my camera to pick up any visuals. However, if I turn the light off, I can still see perfectly around me. This is because there is still a small amount of light coming in through the window, and my pupils widen to let this little light have a big effect on my retina. However, even if the room was much darker than it is now, I would still be able to see nearly as well. And this is because humans have a built-in night vision. And to explain how it works, let's discuss how we see things. There are two types of cells that detect light. The cones detect colour and high levels of detail, while the rods are more sensitive but can only detect the brightness of light. When light hits one of the cells, it causes a chemical reaction which results in a small electrical impulse being sent to the brain. However, the chemical the rod uses for this process is broken apart and takes about half an hour to reform, during which time it cannot detect light. Let's try turning this into a graph. On the x-axis we'll put time, and on the y-axis we'll put rhodopsin, which is the chemical the rod uses. In a bright environment, rhodopsin is used up as soon as it's formed, so the level of rhodopsin is overall very low. Then, if we turn the light off, we begin to form rhodopsin at a rate quicker than we use it up, so the levels begin to increase. And after about half an hour, a new equilibrium is reached, however this time with much higher levels of rhodopsin. This means the much more sensitive rods are able to work, and this gives us better night vision. Some mammals also have a special lining in their eyes which reflects light back and allows the cells a second chance to interact with the photons, further enhancing their night vision. As a species, we are never satisfied with having limitations, so of course we develop technology to further aid our night vision. There are two main types of night vision. The first is thermal vision. Every object with heat gives off infrared light. A thermal vision camera picks up this infrared light and displays it as either a black and white image or one of those colourful rainbow patterns. The second one is the one that gives the characteristic green colour to the screen. These ones are a little bit more complicated, so I think I'm going to need a new diagram. The first components include a lens and a photocathode. The lens collects light and directs it into the photocathode, which converts photons into electrons. The electrons are then accelerated into a microchannel plate. This is a thin piece of material filled with microscopic tunnels. As the electrons pass through the tunnels, they collide with the walls and release further electrons. And because the walls are so much longer than they are wide, all electrons leave in the same direction as they arrived in. These electrons then collide with a phosphor plate, which converts electrons into photons with a wavelength of that of green light. These photons then pass through another set of lenses and into your eyes, allowing you to see in near darkness. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to subscribe for more and share with others. Also check out my Tumblr and my Twitter for more information, more science and more updates.